In the first of its kind dentist to patient podcast, you'll gain incredibly valuable insight into the mouth body connection. You won't hear fluffy filler here. You'll actually be able to connect the dots. Join us for a worthy jolt of insight on the Total Health Dentistry Podcast with Dr. Ali. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Ali. In this episode, you'll gain a worthy jolt of insight about Total Health Dentistry for our lovely toddlers aged four to six. In the last episode, we took a dive into Total Health Dentistry for our little pumpkins aged zero to three. If you've missed the opening five part series, which laid out the framework for what constitutes total health dentistry, make sure you go back and check out the first five episodes as it will give this episode and future ones greater context. So in the last episode, we looked at the importance of examining the tongue early after birth to see if it may be tied and impeding nursing. We looked at key developmental landmarks. We talked a lot about nursing, about looking at mom's eating and choosing inflammation-free nutrition. Baby's spoon, we talked about that and what's baby's spoon only. We talked about the eruption cyst and looked at watching your baby sleep, sights and sounds. And we finished with underlying causes of thumb sucking and extended soother use. In this episode, which is a part of a 10 part series, we will discuss watching your child sleep part two, thumb sucking and soothering on and on part two, something called pre aligners. I have one nutritional tip. While the birth to age three category is the most important period of dental development after birth, if things went off track in airway nutrition or structure, this age group, the four to six, allows us to get the train back on track. Let's say your toddler is entering this age group with a thumb sucking habit or is soothering on and on and on. And you've already pulled out all the stops and it's, it's not time to up the ante. It's time to find out why it isn't working. Mm -hmm. What is the underlying imbalance that the child is trying to correct or compensate for? We are very blessed at this time in dentistry, right? We have access to some incredible knowledge from Australia and the UK, among other places, which have radically changed the old dogmas we had about why teeth get crooked mm -hmm. and why these habits can form in children. So here we go. Let's dive in. Watching your child sleep part two. It's so important. I really it had to be done in two parts. Mm -hmm. Just for fun, YouTube, quote, what parents need to know about sleep apnea in children. Again, what parents need to know about sleep apnea in children. Okay. YouTube that. After you watch it, you know, I, my question is, is this news to you? Well, believe me, this is cutting edge stuff in medicine and dentistry, which is why we're covering it in total health industry. Okay? Mm -hmm. No fluff, just connecting all the important stuff in this podcast. Nice. Remember the airway and structure episodes from one to five. Yep. Okay, these airways are soft structures and can be easily compressed. So what should be done? Number one, start with a diagnosis. We always have to rule out the most serious causes of, you know, sleep problems, which is something called central sleep apnea. So that starts with your family physician. Mm -hmm. If it's not central sleep apnea and it's obstructive sleep apnea, the question is, well, what's causing the obstruction? Mm -hmm. Is it tonsils? Is it adenoids? Again, your MD or ENT will make that determination and recommend appropriate treatment. But my question is, if it was the tonsils and adenoids, why? Why are they inflamed? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say, yep, they're inflamed, mm -hmm. but why? Yep. What is the allergy irritating them? Well, it's most likely nutrition, the second pillar mm -hmm. of total health dentistry. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about thumb and soother mania. Okay. What's going on? Right. Well, every habit is as different as the person it belongs to. There are no rules for how it will affect any one person. But here at the Total Health Dentistry Podcast, we don't just kind of gloss over all these topics. We're gonna we're we're here to sink our teeth into this. So 
there, there are actually four reasons why a thumb habit may become embedded in, in a child. Mm. Here they are. Comfort and endorphins. That's the first one. Airway opening. Relief of a cranial strain and relief of inner ear pressure. Oh, okay. okay, let's touch on all four of these. So endorphins are the natural feel-good chemicals in the brain that give babies and adults pleasure and comfort. Suckling starts as early as the third trimester. So if the baby is thumb sucking, they need more comfort, more reassurance. It's our job as parents to figure out why it is missing and how to add it back versus focusing on removing the thumb habit. The other thing that um, thumb sucking does is opens the airway. So we've discussed airway over and over. So, uh, so now I'm sure as a total health dentistry listener, you are in tune <laughs> that anything that opens the airway has uh, a very good chance of becoming a habit actually. Mm -hmm. So, and thumb sucking does that because here's what happens. The lower jaw has to move forward to suck the thumb. And this forward jaw motion opens the throat. It opens the airway. Mm -hmm. Now add endorphins to getting more air. And I'm, I'm surprised more children don't get hooked. Yeah. Right? Give, mm -hmm. give, give a child more airway and more endorphins. I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, another reason is the relief of cranial strains. Um, in future podcasts, we will have a knowledgeable osteopath share with us more about what exactly are cranial strains. Mm -hmm. So I'm not an osteopath, so you'll forgive my crude explanation, but how our cranium enters this world <laughs> turns out to be a pretty important factor in mm -hmm. our total health. Of course, I'm talking about our birth history, yeah. how we're actually born. So if we come in head first with a relatively fluid labor, we have less strain on our cranium. If we come in, head, foot, arm first and have to be pulled or otherwise coaxed out and it's anything but fluid, well, we've got strains in our cranium. Wow. So while our head may look normal after all these strains, subtly there can be a lot of strain still kind of locked into the cranium. Thumb sucking okay, or soother use can actually cause a gentle compensation or unstraining of these strains mm. into okay. the palate and yep. into the connecting bones up into the cranium. Wow. So again, I'm not an osteopath, but we need somebody who we will have somebody who is very knowledgeable about this come and explore this in, with us a little deeper in future episodes. And the fourth reason why a child may have a, a thumb habit is relief of inner ear pressure. Okay, so this is, you know, to understand this is pretty easy. So as adults, on an airplane, as it's you know ascending and descending, we'll do whatever we have to do to even out that pressure building up in our ear. Same thing for a child. If a child has a history of ear infections, blocked ear drainage, etc., mm -hmm. thumb sucking will allow a relief well, yeah. of this inner ear pressure. So it's I mean it's just a natural habitation absolutely to to do this. So. Yep. If you've missed earlier episodes about strategies for decreasing the chances of things like ear infections in children, make sure you go back and check out episode eight, as well as the first five episodes, which set the stage for total health dentistry. All right, so I just want to switch gears to something called pre-aligners. Thanks to our colleagues in Australia and UK, there are some fascinating options available to us now. Remember, if the first three years of dental development didn't go the way we would have liked. In this age group, the four to six age group, thanks to these pre-aligners, we can recover, treat the underlying causes. Here's a hint, Matt. It has to do with airway, <laughs> nutrition, and structure to get the train back on track. Right on. Um, so without these three, you know, without these pre-aligners in dentistry, we have been doing the watch and wait Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, during this age group or pull and wait. And there are many, many other options. But thanks to our Australian colleagues, they've given us something called myobraces. Okay. Um, you know, braces straighten teeth 
okay? Braces straighten mm -hmm. teeth. But crooked muscles cause crowding. Okay. So myo braces are braces for muscles. By and large, the muscles are the ones crowding out the teeth. Improper function of the muscles. Wow. Yeah. So while braces straighten the teeth, myobraces straighten the muscles. To be more precise, myobraces retrain muscles that have become crooked <laughs> to compensate for another problem, likely linked to airway nutrition and structure. Yeah. So we are using myobraces with something that we're going to also talk in great deal about is oral myofacial therapy. We're using myobraces with oral myofacial therapy as a pre-alignment to either totally prevent the need for braces in the future or at least lessen the length and the cost wow. of braces in the future. That's fantastic. Treating the root cause. Yep. Okay, so I want to have also share one nutrition tip for this age category. Mm -hmm. So let's be real, right? Kids are going to eat sugar. Um, <laughs> one way or another, they're going to get uh, they're going to get some poor nutrition between mm -hmm. those uh, chubby cheeks. Yep. And uh, so, how do we minimize the damage, okay, from the sugar? Well, here's a little tip. Insist on having if you're going to have a sugary snack, if a child's going to have a sugary snack, insist that it be eaten with lunch mm. or with dinner. In other words not as a mid-meal mid -meal snack. Yep. Why? The answer is saliva. Mm. Saliva is the great tide that comes into the mouth and sweeps away debris off the shore and sugar off the teeth, or at least helps neutralize the acidity that's mm. building up from the sugar. Wow. During and immediately after a meal, saliva is running at the highest level. Think mm. about it. You just ate, there's saliva running everywhere. That is the time you want sugar if there's going to be a time yep. so that you're minimizing the damage because there's a ton of saliva around. As a snack between meals, when saliva is at the lowest, the sugar will do the most damage. So to accept the compromise of a sugary treat very occasionally, but it has to be with a meal. Yeah, that's, that's so important. That's the rule. Yep. Well, Matt, would you like to hear other total health dentistry topics in this age group? <laughs> yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have any kids, but you'll be uh, armed if you have. Oh, a... I'll be well armed. I'll have a full <laughs> arsenal. Thanks, CLE. <laughs> <You'll be armed. laughs> um, you may have noticed that I've not gone into avoiding sugary snacks and drinks, avoid excessive candy, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. I mean, I'm just tired of that message, that sort of fluffy dental message we yeah. hear all you gotta the time. You got to be real. Right? Yeah. Tell me something I don't know, right? That's mm -hmm. why I created this podcast, so I could share these rarely heard topics with our Total Health Dentistry listeners. Mm -hmm. Having said that, if there are some topics you'd like me to discuss, even if they are on the fluffy side, no worries, please share them with us. If you've missed the first, episode, first five episodes, please go back and listen to these as I build the foundation for Total Health Dentistry. So thanks everyone for joining us for this episode. As we looked at our lovely toddlers aged four to six, I wanted to spend time with you today talking about why watching your child sleep is so important. I dedicated uh, some more time to that as in a previous episode. Also, I want to dedicate more time in this episode to th thumb sucking and soothering. We did that. We discussed pre-aligners in this episode and I also gave you one nutritional tip about when is the best time to have sugar if you're going to have it and let's be real we are going to have sugar our children are going to eat it and so please join us next time as we move on to the next age category which is ages 7 to 19. see you then please note that dr ali farahani is a general dentist and that total health dentistry is not a specialty of dentistry while we make every effort to broadcast correct information dentistry is a constantly changing science and art one doctor may have a different way of doing things from another. Dr. Ali Farahani is simply presenting his views and opinions that will be as evidence-based as possible. We welcome any comments, suggestions, or corrections of error. Dr. Ali Farahani takes no money from drug or device companies. By listening to this podcast or reading this blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others, including but not limited to patients that you are treating. Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you 
may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the podcast or blog. Under no circumstances shall Sante Family Dental, Dr. A. Farahani Dentistry Professional Corporation, or Dr. Ali Farahani, or any of their employees, associates, or affiliates, any of the guests or contributors to the podcast or blog, be responsible for damages arising from use of this podcast or blog.